Let's get into these burning questions for the 2022 fantasy season. Uh, basically, the line starts off with you must blank. And I'm going to give you guys a player and you guys have to tell me what you guys must do with said player for the season. Make sense? Great. Aaron, I'm giving you a dynasty question first because Friday we're going to actually go into our dynasty mock draft. Travis Kelsey, this is dynasty specific. What must you do with Travis Kelsey? Now, I know you're shaking your head, and I'm going to specify about this. I'm going to really get into this because there is people, there are people out there wondering what to do with Travis Kelsey, whether they need to in a dynasty league. He's oh. getting older. He might be the number one guy in Kansas City, so maybe he can't handle that load. Maybe he's going to be one year, and then there will see regression. People are worried about Travis Kelsey and the regression, and when you when you sell high before getting burnt. So answer that question, basically. When do you sell high on a Travis Kelsey, or do you just ride this ship on him for – until it crashes and you go down with the ship. Um, I'm going to give you my answer in numeric form. Tra with Travis Kelsey, yeah. nine, nine, I don't one, no. one, 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 no. one, two. He's Let great. Me no, no, no. You no, asked your I, damn question. Let I me did finish. Not, no. Let the man no, speak, no. Minnie. You Let asked the question. Finish. You teased him. He's Let answering with Roman numerals. I'm answering the question. Nine, nine, one, nine, one, nine. one, 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 two. You do nothing. You do nothing with the great tight end that is Travis Kelsey. He stays on your roster until one, he retires, or until two, he can't move anymore. <laughs> You're not this. Let me to all the dynasty players out there, just because a player turns a certain age doesn't mean you have to get rid of them. Yes. Is it better to get rid of a player before the decline happens? Absolutely. But tell that to the Tom Brady owners from six years ago. Tell that to, to the owners of, of guys that we've seen go past their prime. It, it's not as simple as just saying, oh, he's 32, he's going to decline. Travis Kelsey has been the top tight end in football since 2014. You're not doing anything with him. He's staying on your roster. When he starts to show that he's declining, then we can have that conversation. But until that happens, we're not having that conversation. I am not going to sit on this show and allow the blasphemy in my best Stephen A. impression, to come out of your mouth talking about any notion that we should move on from Travis okay. Kelsey in Dynasty. So don't so you are so that the caliber of player that Travis Kelsey is is a player that you go down with the ship no matter what. Okay, like you when if nothing. if if and when that day comes, you go. Well, Dylan, you're the future teller. You'd be able to tell me you, if it you just don't. Or not. You're not going to fall off a cliff. Like most players don't fall off a cliff. Most players don't go from the best to, oh my God, you can't even put them on a roster, right? So when you start to see a decline, then those conversations can be had. But I'm sorry, have you seen a decline from Travis Kelsey? He is a tight end who is always the best tight end damn near. And every year he produces like a wide receiver one. There's no decline that I'm not doing anything with him. Are you, and now for, and I'll send this question to Dylan here on Travis Kelsey, more of a redraft uh, point of view. Do you draft Travis Kelsey in round one? 12 team league. Do you draft Travis Kelsey in that round one? Depends on where in round one. Where am I picking? Is he a top 12 pick, Dylan? That's yes, the question. He's a, yes, he's a top 12 pick. He has okay. been. Is he a top, for quite 10? Some time. Is he a top he's 10? Is he a top pick. 10 pick? He's a, he's a okay. first rounder in the 10 round. Good. I just wanted to, I wanted to see where you're at with that. Okay, good, good, good. Um, okay, so Travis Kelsey, Dynasty, that we're moving on. Dylan, I will give you a different player, though. We talked about him on Friday's show. You said he's done. Ezekiel Elliott, what are you doing with Ezekiel Elliott? What must redraft. you do with this? Yeah, redraft. Redraft. First. Redraft. I. This has been my philosophy for years now, ever since I got burned one year, and it's going to stay the same. It might be unpopular. I'm avoiding a Mike McCarthy running back. I don't care. I don't care what Zeke Elliott did. If it's, if Aaron he's searching his phone, he's pulling up his notes. It says thousand and ten, <laughs> thousand and ten. Oh God, thousand yards, ten touchdowns. Oh God. But I, I'm sitting here and I'm telling you, man. I mean, 
every like I know he's not going to be the guy that you're getting in the first round. This is going to be a third round, fourth round pick this year, which is all right value I'd say for Ezekiel Elliott. But I just he's getting older. That I mean, I just the way that they share the football in Dallas always makes me concerned. Um, the way that just Mike, Mike McCarthy's been doing business. It went back to the Jamal Williams, Aaron Jones things. He loved he loved Jamal Williams. Aaron Jones barely saw the football field when he was there. And um, I, I question that a little bit. And I don't care how good of a running back he is. I don't care if he gets his touchdowns. I, I'm just avoiding that situation entirely. I, I don't know how to have this argument anymore. It doesn't make any sense. To say you're avoiding a player that produces at top 10 at the position is just a stupid and it's asinine. You don't you don't go into a fantasy football season and say, you know what? I know this guy is going to be top 10 at the end of the season in fantasy football because he's done it every year since he's been in the league, but I'm not going to draft him. I don't care if he's in the third, fourth round. I'm just going to leave him alone because I know he's going to finish in top 10, but because he burned me when I drafted him number two overall, I, yeah, exactly. I, I don't want to draft him. That's a stupid strategy. It doesn't work. It's not how you play fantasy football. Fantasy football is about value. If you're trying to tell, if you're asking me, do I draft Zeke in the top 10? No, I'm on board with that. He's not a top 10 guy anymore. So I'm not taking him in the first round. I'm not taking him probably in the second round, maybe late second round. Third round's probably about where he needs to go. But guess what? He's going to turn back third round value because you know what's going to happen? He's going to play 16, 17 games. He's going to get 1,000 yards. He's going to score his touchdowns. Everybody acts like Tony Pollard has taken so much work away from Zeke. Tony Pollard had 130 carries. Zeke had 250 almost. Like, what, what, what do you want? What more do you want? And that's on an injured knee. And we can talk about, oh, well, everybody's injured. But not everybody's playing injured. Ezekiel Elliott is a 1,000-yard back every season, usually puts up double-digit touchdowns. What else do you want from a fantasy player you're getting in the third and fourth round? So, yeah, if you're telling me what if you're asking me what to do in redraft, you take Zeke at the value he's been going now. If he is sitting there and you're in your third round pick and he's on the board and you maybe you did the no running back strategy, you're taking Zeke. Maybe you took a Christian McCaffrey early and now he's there late or whatever. You're taking Zeke. And if you're not and you're passing on him for somebody else that has bigger question marks, I guarantee it. You're probably making a mistake because there's one thing I know about Zeke. He's going to play. And at the running back position. It's far more important than anything else. He is going to play. One more point before you go, Vinny. You talked about the weapons. No more Agamari Cooper. We don't know what Dalton Schultz is. Michael Gallup is coming off of an, uh, an injury. They have CeeDee Lamb. Let's stop with this Dallas Cowboys have weapons all over the field thing. Okay? They have CeeDee Lamb right now. That's it. We haven't seen it. And Michael Gallup, we don't know when he's going to be back. Jalen Tolbert's a rookie. Dalton Schultz is, is a nice piece. But let's stop with they have so many guys. They spread it around. They got all these weapons. No, they don't. They have CeeDee Lamb. And he had drop issues last year. So let's stop acting like the Dallas Cowboys have a ton of weapons. They don't. So I, I, I wanted to look this up because I, I, I don't know if Dylan did the research on this. Um, what? But – the last time okay. you you made a, a very interesting point talking about Mike McCarthy and his his prior history with running backs, and I wanted to see when the last time outside of Ezekiel Elliott, who obviously just had a thousand yards this past season with uh, he hit what was his total? I know the answer, Vinny. It's Eddie Lacy. One thousand fifteen. One yeah, yeah. It, it was tw <laughs> twenty fourteen Eddie Lacy. Oh, twenty fourteen Eddie Lacy. So is there a, that, was that, there a point in there though? No, I'm just, I, I'm just, right I, I'm, before he I'm, got fat, Zeke's getting fat now. I'm kind of interested to see if that's He's where actually. Dylan, if that's the, the route that Dylan was taking. Cause I, I did you, you can, it's so with, funny. With certain he, arguments, Mike McCarthy doesn't even call the plays in Dallas. He doesn't call the plays. So every time, every time you bring that up, it just baffles my mind. He doesn't call the plays and you're, you're talking about, the, the years of Aaron Jones when he was a rookie in his second year in the league when they were still trying to get him up to speed. And after that, then he was fought, he was gone. Like and Mike McCarthy was fired after there and the that. Was a beast. You, you act like these guys come in every time as a rookie and just sprout. Aaron Jones was a sixth-round pick. He wasn't some touted first-round pick that Mike McCarthy didn't give the ball to. He was a sixth-round pick who had to make his way on the roster, earn a job, and then you wanted him to get the full bulk of carries right away. Like what? What? That doesn't even for make James sense. Robinson. He was undrafted. They oh cut Fournette God. for him. Kellen Moore. If if you're going that route, oh, Kellen Moore's first job. two 
Kellen Moore's first two years as offensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys were Ezekiel Elliott's blow up years of 14 and 1300 yards. So I don't know if that uh, you, Aaron, you brought up the fact that the play calling. Um, wait, what, wait, 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 say that, that again. Uh, say that the again? first the first years of Kellen Moore being the offensive coordinator or the the, the play caller, uh, the play caller of okay. the Dallas Cowboys. He had 14 and uh, 1300. Yards. Well, to be Boy, fair, really? I mean, Z- Z- Zeke had... teams. Was he the quarterback coach? I he was, he was but he was called. But he was he was, was calling. Quarterback. I thought Scott wasn't Scott Linehan. Plays? Scott Linehan was there. Scott Linehan was there during that time. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay. So disregard anything I said, and my research is now. Irrelevant. This, but this is not different than any other team that has a quarterback that's young, like Dak Prescott was, ran the ball early in their career, and then became a throwing offense. That's the. That's really the point here. Every team does this that has a young quarterback that they think is a franchise guy. We saw it in Seattle. They stopped running the ball with Marshawn Lynch in that running game, and it turned into Russell Wilson's team. This is not shocking. This is a scheme thing. This is not a Zeke thing. This is a scheme thing. The fact of the matter is, is yes, is Zeke 24 again, 22? Is he going to run like that? No. But when you watch Zeke run the football when healthy, he is a still an effective back. He is still one of the better in-between-the-tackle runners, and when he's around the goal line, he gets in the end zone. He's, he's always reliable. And again, at the running back position in fantasy football, which guys like Dylan are like, man, the guys are missing games and all this stuff. You can't talk out of that side of your mouth and say that, and then on the other end say you don't want Zeke, who plays every single game. That is just, you're talking out of both sides of your mouth, and then you can't win at all. So let's let's play that let's play that game again of would you rather set a running back over Ezekiel Elliott based on ADP for this year, uh, Ezekiel Elliott or Josh Jacobs? Dylan, I know Ezekiel you just Elliott. said you didn't. I, okay, I'm not okay. taking I'm not taking Josh Jacobs. He can piss right off. Ezekiel Elliott hey, or the running backs, Antonio Gibson. Antonio Gibson, and he's got an N next to my name on the next one. Okay. That's the one I was going to go to next. So don't, we'll talk about him in, in just a, just a moment. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott or Cam Akers? Cam Akers. Ezekiel Elliott or someone we might talk about later, Elijah Mitchell. <laughs> Elliott. Okay. Okay. So you're you pretty much right around. He J.K. Dobbins. Or... He just picks and chooses who he wants. I mean, all these guys, those are bad backs right there. And guess what? Yeah. All the guys, any. all the guys that you would pick over Zeke have no track record, have been hurt, and yet you What's bring Javante's up Javante's ADP. I'd reach on him before any of them. Well, that's Javante, not a reach. He's I going, would, he is the Javante Williams is ADP is the fifteenth player off the board. Oof, yeah. oof. Jav, Javante, what, Steve, you have a, didn't you put him in the top ten? He is the top he ten running back. <laughs> that's very no. Javante, you put him in your top ten. Javon, yeah, Javante top 10. Williams, right now he is being taken as the RB eight. Whew. Ahead of ahead thing. of DeAndre Swift, ahead of Nick Chubb, ahead that's of Alvin Kamara. That's, that's the one th- name that people have wrong. Like DeAndre Swift should be higher. Uh, yeah, Kamara should definitely be DeAndre higher. Swift. Okay, okay. So let's let, let, let's continue playing this uh, this game here and, and bringing up names. And I'll go to you next, Aaron, on a dynasty question, and then I'll finish off with you, Dylan, and I'll I'll, I'll end up giving you Antonio Gibson. So uh, Terry uh-huh. McLaurin, Aaron. Dynasty for Terry McLaurin, a guy that we're seeing all these wide receivers get paid. Cooper Cup, we talked about earlier, getting the bag. A.J. Brown was another one of those guys. D.K. Metcalf looking for his. Debo Samuel's looking for his. Really, I'm I'm talking about those wide receivers who do not have a payday yet, and specifically Terry McLaurin, who has not gotten an extension, on a team with uncertainty at the quarterback position, and but he still ends up finding ways – to produce so in a dynasty league if you are a terry mclaurin owner what are you doing with him are you trying to are you looking to trade him are you comfortable with terry mclaurin and his up in the air contract status on the team with carson wentz or possibly sam howell or taylor heineke i I don't think the i don't think the contract status matters and i don't think the team that he plays for matters if i have terry mclaurin i'm selling and the reason i'm selling is because despite him having, you know, adequate seasons, his name value is super high for whatever reason. People like him. And 
He's he's it doesn't matter where he's at. I think he's about what he is. I, I think he has the talent to be an excellent receiver, but he's probably a wide receiver too in most in most in best best case scenario. I don't ever see him getting wow. to the top ten wide receivers. Um, it's over three seasons he's been at best wide receiver twenty. I mean, and we said he's had good years. So yeah. you give him a better quarterback, you put him maybe in a better situation, but he's probably going to be seeing less targets in an offense where maybe there's another weapon. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's been the only offensive threat really for them out on the outside and he's produced. He's done a really good job. He's very, if he's on your team, I'm not mad at it, but I, I if I'm him, I think his name value actually has a lot more steam to it than where he's going to return just because for whatever reason, people like to see that. They like to see a guy who's produced with no quarterback, no team, and perhaps being able to go somewhere else and produce, I would sell him because I think you can get a pretty good return for him. Is this Imagine the best quarterback? Go ahead, go ahead Dylan. Uh, I was going to be- ask, is this the best quarterback that Terry McLaurin has has had? It's Carson Wentz, Case Keenum, uh, Colt uh, McCoy. I mean, Taylor Heineke, Taylor Kurt, Heineke. Uh, Carson Wentz. Or is there a real difference? No, that's what I, I, I that's, that's I what I'm know. saying. I think I think the it's biggest the thing is is it's not it's not even you can focus on and we we do this with wide receivers obviously you focus on who's throwing them the ball but you also have to look in this is the best wide receiver too that Terry McLaurin has had on the opposite side. Well, we don't we don't necessarily know what what Jahan Dotson's going to be, but I'm very high on him. So in my opinion, I think this is the best wide receiver too it. he's had aligned up on the other side of him to possibly take away targets go ahead Dylan. yeah but it's not just him either it's antonio gibson it's jd mckissick it's curtis samuel being healthy like yeah, it's brian robinson Rob. now being in the backfield like not that he's going to catch anything but he'll you know whatever <laughs> um I, I i i don't buy so much into that i think terry mclaurin will be terry mclaurin he'll be a wide receiver yeah. too and he'll be good okay Dylan. what if like i mean and this is what if so you got to play into dynasty world here um this guy goes to green bay and whenever his contracts up I mean that'd be pretty oh, sexy. God. I mean you would you, well, would, you, you, you say that, though. but but you say that, but you say that. But what happens if Christian Watson or somebody else comes out and has a good year this year? When have we ever seen the wide receiver two in Green Bay be any good? When have we well, seen the wide receiver two in Green Bay been any good? Yeah, like I mean, I mean recently, like since Devontae okay, Adams has been the one. Driver, the okay, Jerry, okay, but but also you have to take into account how long is Aaron Rodgers there. You're talking Still, dynasty, well, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron we, Rodgers we, for we, one year. You're not going to buy that. All right, but, maybe but, Justin but Fields thing, has though, a good you, year. They go to Chicago. What like when, Houston? When we look maybe at this, though, Houston. when we look at this, you Dylan, you you just said it perfectly. In in dynasty world, you kind of do have to play with the what ifs. Yeah. And if Terry McLaurin doesn't have a deal now, and we see the state of the franchise of Washington. Exactly. There is that there is that possibility where Terry McLaurin might not even want to return to Washington. And obviously you be can't play what if in dynasty. You can't Why? play okay, what so if. Enlighten me. Can't I, play I, what I, if. T- if because I'm if a you new play dynasty, what if, you, you, don't play, you don't think of contracts and stuff when you're get, getting these players. Okay, so Terry McLaurin leaves, and now he's a free agent. Or if you want to talk what ifs, he's he's not signing at the end of the year. The what if is. Washington's not letting him walk out the door, so they'll franchise tag him. He becomes Allen Robinson. Now he becomes disgruntled. So now you're like, do you does he play under the franchise tag? And guess what happens if he does? If he does play next year, they can franchise him again. That's how the NFL works. You can assume he leaves. Say, let's say he does walk out the door. You just mentioned it. He goes to Houston for more money. He goes to J- uh, Justin Fields in Chicago for more money. It's a are Kenny Galladay all over again. Are you telling me you're so much more excited with Terry McLaurin going to Justin Fields playing in Chicago? I think in, in over being on Washington. No, you're not. It's the same I situation. Think, I think with this though, and, and, and I, I'm not arguing with you here. I'm just playing the game of what ifs. Cause I, so I personally, I've only been in one dynasty league. So I'm, I am a newer person to the dynasty world. So when I have a, if I had Terry McLaurin and if I was in that situation, I would be holding on to him only because I am hopeful that he does end up in a better situation. But I know in my, in the back of my head, I've seen the quarterbacks that he's played with and performed well with to say, okay, I'm okay. Holding on to Terry McLaurin because I know even in the shittiest situation, the likelihood of him playing well is let me ask you good. a question where where do you have terry mclaurin amongst wide receivers like just our average ballpark ranking i have him as a 
I have him as a wide receiver, a high end wide receiver too. I have okay, him up so there with, with like you talk about like guys like I'd say I'd have Chris Godwin ahead of him, but not far ahead of him. I'd say that's okay. the, that's kind of the line. I think that that if that gives you a good gauge, I'd say him and Chris Godwin are right there. So, so right now, if somebody so if somebody right now gave you Chris Godwin for Terry McLaurin, you taking it? No. You're keeping no. Terry McLaurin. I am because <laughs> and I know I know if, Tom Brady is okay. Is, okay, is, let is let me ask you this: wonder T Higgins or Terry McLaurin? T Higgins. Because okay. he has Joe. You, Bro- I know that quarterback situation. Okay, so my point being is, right now, I would I would venture to guess T. Higgins is probably ranked below Terry McLaurin. I don't know for sure, but if you get that trade offer, you're not you're not turning that down. You're probably taking T. Higgins, and guess what? T. Higgins' upside really is probably a wide receiver too. Wide receiver with yeah. Jamar Chase there. Yep, and that's what you're saying. Terry McLaurin is so it's it's his name value will get you a return in which his production will never get you. That's I guess that's my point, is he's put up wide receiver two numbers. That's probably what is it what it is. You could probably get more in return, and that's really what Dynasty is about. It's about value and getting the right value to move forward. If you can get a player and say a third-round draft pick with, with that let's, or a second-round well, draft pick. Let's look, at, let's, let's, let's look at it as someone in the same exact situation. DK Metcalf. Which would you rather yeah. have, DK or Terry McLaurin? Terry McLaurin. DK. DK. Easy. Terry McLaurin every day of the week. Easy. A- easy. You, oh, you want to know why? Because, know. because DK Metcalf's upside is top five. Terry McLaurin's is not. And in Dynasty, that's what you're looking for. If you True. say Dynasty. what if, imagine so if DK Metcalf goes and plays with Aaron Rodgers. Well, what, like, hold on. What is, but, the but, same but, thing. Hold on. Let me, and again, not arguing here, just trying to get answers. <laughs> if you guy. see, we've seen Terry McLaurin play well with bad quarterbacks. You don't know what his ceiling could be with a good quarterback, but we've seen DK Metcalf with a good quarterback in Russell Wilson. That ceiling has come what, with wait, a, wait, wait. A, a top quarterback in Russell Wilson. We, we haven't, haven't seen, seen DK Metcalf's ceiling. Yeah, no, he's but, been, but he's got Lockett. He's, he, I'd like to see him. We, you haven't seen DK play. Metcalf's ceiling. You've seen DK Metcalf play great, but you think the top seven is not DK Metcalf's ceiling. If DK Metcalf was on a team that, like, Give him Aaron Rodgers, you're going to see a top five receiver. Give him Patrick Mahomes, you're going to see a top five receiver. So Terry so McLaurin's think- ceiling is – the talent is not equivalent. That's the, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So when you okay. talk about upside, you're looking at talent along with situation. Yes, Terry McLaurin has not had a great situation. DK has had a better situation yeah. with Russell Wilson. But if I'm playing the what-if game, my what-if for DK Metcalf I know could be top five. And I've already seen him. Mind you, last year DK Metcalf in a bad season – was was wide receiver 14. Terry McLaurin's never been better than wide receiver 20. That tells me all I need to know. Okay. Fair enough. Best play of DK Metcalf's career was a tackle. <laughs> Jesus. All right, let's let's finish it off. I promised I'd give this one to you, Dylan, and we're going to go that route. Terry McLaurin's teammate, Antonio Gibson. What what are you doing with Terry uh with uh, Antonio Gibson? You must what? I must not draft Antonio Gibson. Um, that guy was very hyped um, by our panel and many others in the fantasy football community. Um, <laughs> saying that this guy would just break out year. Uh, McKissick's roles disappearing for some reason. I was always big on McKissick. Um, his role stayed consistent. But, um, I mean, it's just he, he battled some injuries last year. They bring in a Brian Robinson. Uh, they still have Jared Patterson in that backfield. McKissick's still not going nowhere. Um I question that. I, I I do. I think there's right when you think that it's going to be all right, it just it gets gets to where it's not all right. I th- I saw a similar situation. Now the production wasn't there. Uh, Devin Singletary was good year one in Buffalo. They bring in Zach Moss. I think that's what you could see here. Uh, Antonio Gibson good in year one. Then they bring in Brian Robinson, sort of buzz kill, uh, if you will. He had an opportunity to take over that backfield. He couldn't do it last year, so I'm not drafting him. So where so. Obviously, like if people, some people do hear that and, and think you're not drafting him at all. Like if he was in round 12, you're not drafting like that kind of Dylan thing. has no running backs on his I, I team know. based on no, the way he says. Yeah. So no, let, I got let me Cook just and Madison and I'm never let, changing my RB1 what spot. Round, what round would you draft Antonio Gibson right now? Right now he is the RB, right now he is the RB18 uh, 
in in redraft leagues, and he is going in the third round. Cool. Cool. He's going right at the right at the almost at the tail end of the third. He's going. He's the thirty first player in ADP right as of right now. And we're still early in redraft in the redraft process. So this all this is gonna probably that's change but he is i wouldn't even think, i wouldn't even say his name into consideration uh, until it's late fifth. standard yeah he's higher than that first it's of actually all, standard so hold way, on let me the, see where the way you're frowning dylan is no, ridiculous he's, he's only one spot he's actually one spot lower in ppr this yeah, is what I mean, always this, this baffles this is always what baffles my mind people do not understand the value of the running back position antonio gibson as bad as he's been because we overhyped him. Yes, he was overdrafted last year. No doubt about it. He was overhyped. As bad as he's been. 12 team league, he's been a wide he's been a running back 1 and he's been a running back high running back 2, ranked 12th and 13th. In a bad in in two seasons where he didn't have all the workload, had a bad season, got some injuries, didn't play that great, and yet he the worst he's been is running back 13. Understand the value. If you're getting that in the third round, you're taking it. Like if you're rejecting that, make me say yuck. He's the one for yeah, me. But you don't get yeah, I, if I, you play fantasy football with emotions. That's why you lose. You can't play with emotions. You got to play with value. It's all about numbers. Is he going to produce or is he not? If Antonio Gibson well, has the year he had so, last year, he had 795 yards, game long, a, this shit. eleven touchdowns, so, and guess what? He finished as running back thirteen. Running back position is depleted. It is. It is. And that, that's what we're going to compare here now. So it, the running backs going around Antonio Gibson in a PPR league, you taking Antonio Gibson or James Conner, Aaron? This year, I'm taking James Conner. I saw this enough from him last. And this is, that's a lot for me because I was doing yeah. like F. James Conner, but the value says James Conner. And this is redraft. Are you taking him, Antonio Gibson or Josh Jacobs? Ooh, that's probably the line. They're pr- they're pretty close to me, but I probably lean towards Antonio Gibson. Are you taking the shot on Zeke or Antonio Gibson? Zeke, it's not close. Zeke. Okay. Okay. J.K. Dobbins. <sighs> I like the upside of Dobbins. I'm. Pr- I-, I would have to assume he's coming back healthy. Um. So I would lean towards Dobbins because I think Dobbins is one of those sneaky could be yeah. top ten guys. I agree, and I think and 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 to what Dylan was saying with like. And, and what you were saying was you have to take value in this and that. If I'm staring down, if ADP works itself out to be look exactly like what it is right now, and I'm staring down those run because Zeke, Zeke, Jacobs, Montgomery, uh, Dobbins are all ranked behind in ADP or ADP. They're all going behind Antonio Gibson according to the ADP. So it, it is one of those situations where I'm like, okay, I'm I'm going to. I'd rather take a shot on Dobbins. Or someone, or or Montgomery, or someone else over Antonio Gibson. But the last thing I want to ask about this all sums up with crowded backfields because talked about Antonio Gibson and the. Uh, I think group. that's kind of, I think that's kind of misleading though. We assume well, Brian Robinson is going to get carries. Jared well, no, Patterson but, but only. You e- no. either way. No, hold on. No, 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 because I hate when people do that. How many third string running backs get carries in the NFL, Dylan? How do you know he's a third string running back? Over well, Antonio Gibson's clearly the starter, and JD yeah. McKissick is clearly the passing down back. So where does Brian Robinson passing fit in there? Down. He's the third running back. How many third running backs get touches in the NFL? They, Good they luck. Thank it. you. That's my point. No, so we I'm have serious. to stop we with saw. this crowded backfield stuff. This is not a crowded backfield. It's Antonio Gibson and it's J.D. McKissick. Now, if Brian Robinson comes on, could he leapfrog somebody? I'm not saying he can't, but right now, there's two running backs there. We are assuming Brian Robinson is even a thing. So This in, is what so we do when, sense, when rookies going, are drafted. He's going to get carries. Uh, you want an example? I'll throw it out there. It was the Raiders last year. Richard got some passing work. Not every time. He got some Jaylen passing. Richard wasn't injury. a rookie. Jalen Richard wasn't a rookie. He had been the passing down back in Oakland and, and Vegas sure. for like four years. He's not a rookie. I agree on that point. So what are you talking about? What? What? what oh. Okay, Frank Gore, Devin Singletary. The, I mean, rookies do me, get their runs. This in the, let me nip this in the butt. Let me just stop this here and ask the question I wanted to ask, and then we can wrap this show up. Crowded backfields, whether you look at it as there's three, four running backs, or even if it's two or three, or two or potentially three. You look at New England, that 
always is a crowded backfield. You got Miami, who is now has just all of the running old running backs or just RB twos there. You look at San Francisco, who has been known to have multiple running, use multiple running backs. Are you more, Aaron, are you more comfortable with Antonio Gibson in that offense or rank those crowded backfields, whether you disagree or not, crowded backfields, New England, (laughs) New England, San Francisco, Washington, Miami. Rank those in terms of who you're most likely to draft, whether it's Damian Harris it's Antonio Gibson, it's, Chase it's Antonio Edmonds. Gib- it's not close. It's Antonio Gibson, and then it's Elijah Mitchell. Like I, I don't think those backfields are crowded. Like everybody's saying they are. I, I don't. I think the New England backfield is not even really that crowded, to be honest. I think it's two guys. It's Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson. The only problem is, is they don't catch enough passes. Like so, it depletes okay. their pat their PPR. Miami's backfield. I just don't know who's going to start. If after two games, Chase Edmonds seeing 15 carries a game, then that backfield is no longer crowded there. I do in the NFL. You just don't see teams that run three backs. Like it's, it's just not really a thing. I mean, there are every once in a while, you can point out a new England where one game, they might use their third back, but it's not consistent. I don't think there's any doubt that Antonio Gibson is the day one starter for the Washington football, Washington commanders. I think, does he hold on to that job? It might be an issue because he's fumbled and then Jared Patterson comes in for the rest of the game. We've seen that. That's up to Antonio Gibson. But when I'm drafting, I'm not drafting for, oh, my God, if this happens. Like, at his best, I have to assume these guys are healthy. At their best, I'm taking Antonio Gibson, and I don't think it's close in those situations. 